Welcome again. Right now we're in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Paul, less than the least. Paul continues his letter to the saints in Ephesus, saying, For this cause I, Paul, some people think that every word that Paul writes is actually Jesus speaking. Here he says, I, Paul. If this is Jesus speaking, then Jesus' name is Paul. Don't forget, this is a personal letter from Paul to the saints in Ephesus. Remember, he traveled throughout that region of the world, preaching the gospel to a lot of the Gentiles. And now he is following up by writing letters. For this cause, I, Paul, am the prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles. Once again, if this is the word of Jesus, if this is the word of the Lord, if every word here is God speaking to you, then God is a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He is in prison right now on behalf of you Gentiles. If it is so that you have heard of the administration of the grace of God, which was given me toward you, the word administration here in some translations is dispensation. This word dispensation has been so blown out of proportion, so mistranslated, and people have actually built their own theology and doctrines on that one word. And that word actually means administration, or actually housekeeping is what it means, really. If it is so that you have heard of the administration of the grace of God, which was given me toward you, how that by revelation the mystery was made known to me, as I wrote before in few words, by which when you read, you can perceive my understanding in the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the children of men, Notice that he specifies the children of men, not the children of God. And there is a big difference. So this mystery was not made known to the children of men. As he said back in chapter 1, the objects of God's wrath, the children of wrath, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body, that is the church, the members of the church, and fellow partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the good news, through the gospel. You see, it wasn't very well known or accepted that even Gentiles could get saved, you know. I mean, this is the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, from the people of Israel, preaching from the prophets of Israel, from the Jewish people, the promised Messiah to the Jewish people. A lot of people didn't even realize that, hey, you know what, even the Gentiles can get saved here and fellow partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the good news, through the gospel, of which I was made a servant according to the gift of that grace of God which was given me according to the working of his power. To me, the very least of all saints was this grace given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the administration the Textus Receptus Manuscripts reads fellowship instead of administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now through the assembly, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him we have boldness and access in confidence through our faith in him. Therefore, I ask that you may not lose heart at my troubles for you, which are your glory." Remarkable that Paul calls himself the very least of all the saints, or in other translations, less than the least of all the saints. That is remarkable because a lot of Christians today hold Paul as the greatest of all the saints, even to the point of believing their interpretation of Paul's letters over what Jesus actually said about the gospel, over what Jesus actually said about the day of judgment and how that's going to transpire. This goes to confirm what I have been saying and what I've been teaching for a long time. And that is that Jesus is the center. He is the Lord, okay? Then there are the 12 disciples. Of those 12, there's one that's the closest to Jesus, that's John, but the other two, James and John, those three are the closest to Jesus. 
Peter, James, and John, John being the closest, of course, but Peter, James, and John, they went places that none of the others went with Jesus. Actually, there were a few times that Jesus actually left the other nine behind and brought Peter, James, and John with him. So Peter, James, and John would know Jesus a whole lot more than the other nine. But even the other nine would know Jesus a whole lot more than Paul would because Paul wasn't even part of the 12. He didn't hang around Jesus at all. The 12, they lived with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They knew him very well. I challenge you, if you haven't done so already, read the letters of Peter, James, and John and see how similar they are. Notice how they all have the same tone and the same message. And then read the letters of Paul and you will see how different that is, okay? Don't forget that Paul is less than the least of all the saints, let alone the 12 disciples. He's not even part of the 12 disciples, but any disciple or apostle for that matter, Paul is less than the least. So if there's anything in the letters of Paul that seems to contradict anything that Jesus said or anything that's written in the letters of Peter, James, and John, you best be taking the words in red over Paul. You best be taking the words of Peter, James, and John over Paul. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. Read the scriptures. Think about him. Draw near to God. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.